can everyone load the lung HE project that we were working on this morning before lunch? It should look something like this. But once again, I don't want to, I want to work on this file, but I don't want to delete anything we've done. So I'm going to right click, duplicate. And this is going to be called lung one HE density. Um, you can uh, go from either, from the from this classifier or the Yosinopole classifier, it's not going to matter. Double click on the density. And again, I want to just start fresh with, with the cells already in place. So I'm going to select all of these annotations. Uh, if you've got, grabbed it from the Yosinopole classifier, it's probably just two points, not all of these different options and deletes. We've now got just one annotation, about 20,000 cells-ish. I want to make use of the uh, bolt classifier we made, but just to start fresh, just make sure everything's like consistent, I'm gonna reload it and reapply it. So to do that, classify, object classification, load object classifier. And um, so these are all the ones we've made so far in this project. Um, I'm going to uh, click on the false ep epithelium, apply classifier. My screen didn't change because it had already been the latest version, but if you had made any changes or used the other file, it should now look something like this. So now this, there was a question from somewhere on the, the right-hand side of the audience here about like, we see all these cells and it's nice that we know that these are the inflamed, the cells in the inflamed regions, but now I just want to find the overall inflamed regions. Thank you. Um, and we can do that using something called a density map. So we're going to go to analyze, density maps, create density map. Okay. There is a lot going on here. So I'm going to try to go through it um, of what, what the different options mean. So we're going to classify um, in this, we're going to just use all cells and all detections will mean the same thing because those are the only detections we have. So we can leave that alone. And let's start by, by making our main class uh, the immune cells class or whatever you call your sites. And I click that and it looks like nothing happened, but that's because my uh, classifier visibility is off. So I'm going to press this uh, button here, which you can also do via C. You can kind of see what's going on there. If you turn off your detections, it becomes much clearer. Um, so what it's showing you here are the regions where cells are dense. You can control the density, the radius of bridges looking for density through here. So like this, you get like really big uh, lobby things. Here you get really, um, if you go like 20, uh, like really tight regions and um, these things all like light up really specifically. Um, for those of you who like to play and make things pretty, you can go into customize appearance and start playing with these values. Um, like I'm gonna make my max opacity lower. Uh, this is pure visualization. It's not gonna affect any of the downstream results, uh, but it does make, it does, does make the dense regions pop a little bit, but I'm going to leave it at auto. I think auto looks pretty good most of the time. Okay, so it is, what it's actually showing you here is the number of immune cells per area. So vaguely, um, the number of immune cells per 20 microns circle radius or whatever area that looks like 300 something. Okay. Um, so of course the, the, this giant region is very, very dense per area. And that's nice, but um, I wanna get both this region and these lymphoid tissues over here. And so um, one thing that I find helps with that is instead of looking at it per area, we're gonna look at it um, as a percent of the local cells. So to switch that, um, the main class is gonna be any. The secondary class is going to be the immune cells and the density type is going to be objects per section. Um, so what this is now calculating is in that circle of 20 microns, 
how many of those cells are immune cells. And for large amounts of this, it's 100%. So it's all yellow. Um, this makes it nice, like easy to compare big regions to small regions because it's just all yellow. Um, once again, you can change this radius if you want. Make it small, and then it's just giving you individual cells. Um, look at, try to find the boundaries and find a density that gives you, gives you the boundaries that you think are meaningful. Like two is definitely too small. Even five is going to be way, way too detailed, but like 20s, 20 looks reasonable to me. We're going to call this fault density. Um, this is a common thing in QPath. You'll see it a lot. Uh, it won't let you do anything until you've saved I've named it, I've saved it. Now I can make a threshold. So this is a threshold on the density we were just calculating. So it goes between 0% and 100%. Um, and so 50 is pretty reasonable, but again, you want to find a threshold that works for you. One thing that's a little annoying is when you're in this screen, it won't let you zoom. Um, and I'm kind of zoomed out and I don't love that. So I'm gonna close it, zoom in, um, then bring up my threshold again. And it's still won't let you do that. Set opacity to 50%. Oh, yes. um, that way you can like really see the boundary. And you want to set a density threshold that, again, gets the boundary of the region accurately. Oh, it's good to me. You can control the opacity here. Okay, once you're happy with your question, set apply. So in this case, the density threshold is the percentage of cells that are positive in that given region. Is yes. that what the, what the number is? Yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to turn off classifier visibility. And here um, are the non associated lymphoid tissue regions. Um, and I think it's picking up some stuff I don't love, so I'm going to delete this and set a new threshold of, I'm going to go 75. Yeah, a little bit clear. And so here's your lymphoid area. Um, so all we, we used the cells to then go backwards and calculate what the areas are of the like the void esque cells. Um, and we can calculate the total area there. Yes, we can. So this view is, is very visual and you would use the um excuse me um export snapshot uh to like grab grab an overview of that. Um uh, there's also there's actually two ex two uh, segmentation options in in this screen. We were using the thresholds. There's also this thing called hotspots, um, where it tries so that it finds the single areas with the highest um, densities, um, and these are supposed to be circles. We're now going to do the exact same thing, but with the epithelium. Um, if you didn't end up classifying the epithelium, don't worry about it. It's the same process. Um, so we're going to go, um, to, we have the same density map up, um, but instead, the secondary class, instead of being immune cells, is going to be epithelium. I'm going to turn my capacity up. And so now it's highlighting uh, these parts nicely. This is going to be called epi density. Um, you can change the radius since it's a different structure. It, it has a different like characteristic length. I think twenty actually still looks pretty reasonable. But if you think if you you would set your sire, feel free to change. There's no reason this has to be the same. It's a different structure. Save it as a new uh, map, and then once again threshold it.
Take a threshold, hit a point. Turn that on. Turn the past all the way off. We now have uh, two sets of objects. We find our spots and we found our epithelium. Um, Sorry, but I was going to skip this because we're running late, but it, it's just really bothering me. So I'm going to show you one thing. Um, uh, there's, it found lots of these like little clusters of cells that aren't actually correct. And um, we can fix that um, uh, using a um, refined annotations. So we're going to click on the epithelium. Objects, annotations, remove fragments and posts. And then I'm going to make a minimum fragment size of 2,000 and a minimum hole size of 2,000. This is exactly like in the um, uh, when we created annotations from the pixel classifier. These are the same uh, settings. We're just doing it step as a second step. Hit run. And like you can see, it made it made the like little blips go away. And if I, it went too far, you want to. Uh, you can uh, so control Z will undo my might. might. No, okay. Then you, you, can you can go in the other direction. Um, if you only remove the small stuff and now you want to remove the medium stuff, cool. But once you've removed it, if control Z doesn't um, work, from the first thing, you yeah, so you like go to a different image or close it without saving, and then it's okay. That works if you've saved it between creating the objects and refining the objects. Yeah. Um, you could also just delete the whole object, go back to the density map, sort of. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the um, on the immune cell object. Okay. 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 So now we have these annotations. We still have all of the detections; those have not gone anywhere. Um, which means now we can run our ESCO class here because we still have all the data. Um, so to, we're going to have to load that again. So we're going to go classify, object classification, load object classifier, and choose your ESCO classifier and apply. So this effectively resets all of the detection, resets all of the classifications that had existed, creates new ones. Uh, uh, most of the cells are negative, and here are the examples. Go to um, view, show log. Okay. Um, mine doesn't have it, so it's not going to show, but um, towards the bottom, it should say, uh, you'll see the mission features error. Does it, um, how many cells does it say is missing? Is it like 20,000 out of 20,000? Or is it like two out of 20,000? So sometimes what happens is for some reason, one individual cell won't get a measurement that it's supposed to have. Um, a, a common reason this is, is like, if the cell has gotten broken up into two parts because of some weird annotation dip, then it can't measure circularity because circularity is simply undefined. Um, that cell will get a null for circularity and then a classifier will say like, I don't know what to do with the null. It'll still attempt to classify it and just is warning you that there's a problem. If it's one cell, um, if at any point all of your cells are missing a feature, you have failed to measure something that you were expecting. Okay, um, I'm going to move on from here. So we've got our ESNFLs, we've got our annotations. Um, I'm going to go to Analyze, Spatial Analysis, Sign Distance to Annotations 2D. Um, and yes, I want to split multiple classifications. 
even though actually in this case it won't matter because they're starting on. Okay, again, nothing seems to happen on screen, but actually quite a lot yeah. happened um, in the background. It measured for every cell the distance to the nearest epithelium and the distance to the nearest bolt, and has now recorded that for every cell. Um, so we can open up the measurement maps we were using a lot yesterday. And way at the bottom, there's two new measurements, one of which is signed distance to immune cells. So there's for every detected cell, we're there. Um, negative values means it's inside the annotation, positive values means it's outside the annotation. So like this is right here. Um, we also have separately signed distance to epithelium. Um, and a fun thing to do is go into the detection measurements table. Um, right click anywhere on the table. Show classes. Yes, intervals. This limits what you're seeing to it gets rid of like most of the things in the table. Obviously, the objects are still there. Uh, show histograms. And go all the way to the bottom. Do distance to epithelium. So here is your distribution of eosinophils and how close they are to the nearest bronchial epithelium. And you have the same thing with bolts. Um, unsurprisingly, most of your immune cells are inside your bolts. Good. Um, aside, uh, within the last like year or so, the field of bioimage analysis has decided that spatial biology means transcriptomics, and that's irritating um, because this is spatial biology. h &E images, which have existed for 150 years, are spatial biology. It's space. <laughs> um, it's super important, and I you don't need RNA like you don't need that. It's that's a good technique. It does a lot of stuff. There's other types of space. Okay, and for the first time this this workshop that it took less time than expected. Right now.